What's happening guys? James from Sigma Strength and Physique. Bring you a chest session where I just was not feeling it, wasn't in the zone. Even tried to rock the white shorts to get me up and about, which uh, evidently was a big mistake. Um, occasionally we'll have these sessions where we're just not feeling it for whatever reason or something just doesn't feel right. It was one of those days I, I just couldn't get um, my stability when bench pressing. It was a Sunday, couldn't be effed. Didn't have a spot or a training partner and just sort of was pretty close to just saying, you know, bugger it, I'll go home and do something else. But I did feel like I had enough energy and I did feel like um, with a little bit of, I don't know, balls and um, <laughs> and brains, we can put together a good session and, uh, and that we did. So... I guess I'll take you through the mindset that I had, if it's of any value to you, and, but also obviously how to construct a good session um, from a technical standpoint and the technique through the movements. It's just random footage of me doing some ISO press, so you don't have to look at blank space or my mug, which needs to be shaved. Um, anyway, I started with bench press, and my first movement is always going to be um, well, sorry, my, my money movement, so to speak, on chest day is, is always going to be a, a variation of a, of a press, probably dumbbell press or barbell bench press of um, some type, probably 90% of the time. Here I'm just going through a little bit of retraction, so I really want to try and get my shoulder blades to pin in, um, lower mid traps, really tucked in hard. So this is me just sort of retracting the shoulder blades sort of back and down, We're trying to sort of replicate the action of a bench press whilst keeping them pinned in. So most of the problems that I see people have with bench press is they let their shoulders protract, which basically means roll out at the top of the movement. So uh, this is a warm up set on the bar where what I'm really trying to do is tuck my lower and mid traps in. Everything's nice and tight, chest up high, flaring the elbows out, keeping the chest up. And I'm actually pulling that bar in towards me. And as I press up, I'm actually driving my hands in. So probably the cue that I use to people is if there was some grease on the bar, your hands would actually slide in. And um, one little thing I do in a moment, which I can uh, credit, I think it was Joe Bennett that I learned this from, is actually sliding the hands across the bar um, to activate the pecs. So essentially, the, uh, the way to get your pecs to work on almost every chest movement is to drive the bicep into the pecs. So what I'm doing here, shoulder blades pinned in, and I'm really sliding hard those hands across the bar with the, um, I guess, the thought process of bicep into pec. And that will get your pec firing as opposed to um, having your delts do all the work, which is what I certainly did for many years. Uh, I think I aborted my top set. I think my top set was about 110. I was going for six, I think about like three. And I dropped it down to, this might be maybe 90, just for as many reps as possible. I could have like six or something, eight. It was pathetic. Just wasn't feeling it. You see, I just couldn't get my stability. That was the main issue today. So you see, I'm sort of um, the left side dipping a little bit more than the right. Just could not get comfortable no matter what I did. It's costing me reps. Um, you certainly just don't want to bash away at something that's just not working. Um, one, you're not going to get much out of it. And two, obviously, there's a chance of injury. And three, it's just incredibly frustrating. So we want to try and find a replacement movement that I guess uh, solves the issue. You can see the look on my face is less than impressed. So stability was my issue with this particular one. So I just went to something that actually took a lot of the stability issues away. So it was um, see the chest press where um, a machine press, I don't have to stabilize the weights as much, it's converging. So it's sort of in a sense almost driving my bicep into the pec for me. Similar cues to bench press, um, you want to keep the chest up hard, shoulder blades pushed in, pinned into the bench. As I'm driving up, I'm actually thinking of driving the bicep into the pec, or you can think about driving the inside of your elbows to meet each other, so the elbow pits. That was my top sets. Um, I was going for sort of somewhere between five and eight. Um, I think we stripped it down and did a big drop set of some type. Basically what I was thinking here is, look, I've done a couple of shitty working sets on my flat bench. All I need to do is find a movement where I can load the chest, I guess, in the mid to lengthen range, which is what's going to probably make my pecs grow. So um, that's the way I think of movements. It's not so much about exercises. Like a lot of people go, well, you must bench, then you must do an incline bench, then you must do a dip. I actually think, well, what am I trying to achieve from the movement? 
and what I'm trying to achieve is something where I can load as much tension or weight through the pec um, in the range where it's the strongest, which is always going to be lengthened to mid-range um, with nearly every muscle. Um, did a couple of working sets and now I'm just trying to essentially get whatever's left in the pecs. Um, you don't need to do a drop set necessarily, it's just that the first start of the session was so shit that um, I didn't want to leave the um, I didn't want to leave the press without being confident that I'd um, got everything out of it. So just just a strip set. Don't be too scientific with it. Take your top set, um, do your top set, and then maybe give yourself a couple of minutes. Drop the weight down, maybe 10, 20 percent. Go to failure. Strip some weight off. Go to failure. It's really about again not prescribing certain amounts of reps. I mean, there's a rep range that will be efficient. And there's the amount of volume that will be efficient. But it's really about getting the job done, and that's just going to come with um, experience in the gym, understanding what you're actually doing, as opposed to just dogmatically following, um, you know, three sets of ten on this, three sets of ten on that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I look at the hypertrophy range being between about five and twelve for the most part. Um, I think if you hang around that range with most movements uh, and get stronger, you uh, you don't have to worry whether it's five or 10 or 12 for the most part i think that um the only thing that would um stop two of the same people ending up at the same place would be if one got bored with a certain rep range so what i'm trying to say is i think it's psychological um the difference in rep range is to progression throwing some ring dips here so this is basically the last of my pressing movements just trying to get whatever's left in the pick so obviously a big stability um element to this um you want to try and keep your scapula shoulder blades pretty stable while you do it. That's why I've started doing these. You can see I'm shit at them, but um, I'm actually improved, which is hard to believe. Um, look, I, I tend to tilt forward, but just be mindful of making sure that GH joint of the shoulder does, doesn't roll forward too much, particularly on the rings where you're not stable. But the stability reason is one of the reasons I'm doing these. It just really activates a lot of pec fibers. I think I did um, probably three sets on there and then just jumped onto the, the actual dip handles just to rep out whatever's left. Um, obviously you lose a few reps with the stability, so I really want to make sure that the fibers, muscle fibers, pec fibers were fully stimulated as opposed to leaving um, you know, a few reps in the tank uh, due to the instability on the rings and just rep those out. I don't know how many I've got, it doesn't really matter. Go till the job's done. Um, you know, we've done our big big movements, so to speak, with the bench and the press. Now we're doing a bit of metabolic work. Um, where I'm gonna try set three different movements um, of the same muscle. So we're doing a, um, I guess, an intensity push up where I'm actually driving, similar to the ISO chest press, driving my elbows in to meet each other. So I'm not pushing back and forth or up and down. I'm actually driving my bicep into my pec on every press. You kind of, I try and get myself, my body weight actually over the handles as much as possible. Um, you know, you, if you've got any sort of functional training, it's going to hold your weight, so don't worry. It's not going to come toppling over. Um, just really getting, again, just getting everything out of its metabolic work, so to speak. Um, obviously, the spectrum is not just mechanical tension, which is that heavy stuff, and then um, your yeah, metabolic work, that's sort of a false dichotomy. It's a combination of both. Suffice to say, pick a rep range somewhere between like probably 10 and 20 and just hammer away. So I've gone from a press to a fly. Um, so two different coordinate kinds of movements. The fly is going to emphasize the shortened range of the pec. We're really trying to get that bicep to really meet the pec at the end. Um, the push-up is probably, I guess, more of a sort of a, a mid-range um, stimulant, or you know, stimulates the pecs in the mid-range. Here I'm just repping everything out, partials, just get everything you can out of it. I'm trying to pump the pecs up with as much uh, goodness as possible. I went and found me a foam roller. I started just doing a little bit of foam rolling to relax. Uh, no, I didn't do that. Got a foam roller uh, from somewhere, and we're going to squeeze the shit out of it for 15 seconds. Uh, so it's like an isometric or isometronic or something like that. It's harder than it looks. So I think I had to like quit two or three times, but 15 seconds as hard as you can is misery. Again, we're trying to drive the bicep into the pecs or the elbow pits to meet each other hard as we can as you see we've got three different kinds of movements there we've got one sort of press um, one sort of fly and then like a like i said whatever you want to call this one doesn't really matter um so they kind of get the best of uh all the worlds and then just to be sure um i just do this sort of hybrid movement which is not really a fly it's not really a press what i'm trying to do is spend as much time in a stretched position down there so really stretching the pecs out 
Um, again, you'll have a little bit left in the length and range. And so really this is a good way to finish because you're just going to get whatever's left in the pecs. Um, again, you'll be strong in the length and range. So just get in there and nail it, stretch it out. Just make sure you control. I tend to cock my wrist just a little bit to make sure the weights don't kind of roll out, um, roll out of my control. I don't want to tear like a, <coughs> a pec or a rotator cuff. Just turn into a press, a fly press. It really doesn't matter. Just get everything out of it. I think I did like one big set of that and that was, that was it. So thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe, like it, comments, uh, more than welcome. Uh, we need to get some subscribers up so I can be bothered doing more content. But in the meantime, train hard and don't give up. How motivational is that?